In the Kickstarter video, Christopher, you talked about how you'd like to make Current C different from other environmental documentaries and that sometimes they seem more sort of like science like, like it's, it's more of a, um, academic, um, you know, video or something. How do you propose doing that with currency? How will it be a little bit different without giving away too much about the show? Sure. Um, so what drew me to currency as a film in particular, as a, as a filmmaker is that I thought it was a very exciting story. Um, there's a lot of inherent conflict, you know, over these resources and, even though the sort of setting and what's at stake and all of that is definitely environmental um, in its nature and, and, and it has to do with protecting the environment, at the heart of it is really a human drama. And, you know, there's a lot of different aspects to that drama too. There's, you know, poverty and, and people trying to get by, but there's also uh, politics and government and corruption. And there's also, you know, more broader themes like, you know, greed and love and kindness and all these things. And so, I mean, I just thought that was an amazing framework, you know, to address a social issue. And also, uh, this kind of came about not too long after Cartel Land was um, around. And, and it really struck me as when I when I saw Cartel Land, I thought, um, you know, and I, I think there are some you know, fair criticism of that movie. So I'm not, I'm not trying to sell it as like the best thing ever, but it really, uh, <laughs> it's a great movie. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. In fact, that I, I felt inspired to make a, a sort of a similar film with a similar vibe to it. And I thought that, but I wanted to do an environmental one and I just thought this had all the pieces for that. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think that that's kind of what I mean. It's not by, by no means not the first environmental film that's like a thriller i think the cove and racing extinction which i was involved with also have um elements of that uh although i think that those are less gritty and then than what oceans uh, than what currency is gonna gonna be in the end um but and then there's also a, uh, another filmmaker um, i'm forgetting his name right now but he did marmato and he just has another one that premiered at tribeca called a river below and i think that he does similar kinds of things so um so I don't want to claim like this is totally unique in its in its tone or vibe. However, I do think that we need to find a way to connect with people on the environment um, that is more than just your typical uh, science lesson about you know um, climate change. And and you know I think you see a lot of environmental filmmakers doing this right now with you know Jeff Orlowski with Chasing Coral. It's like he is talking about coral bleaching, but really he's following. Um, you know, these scientists and photographers who are trying to capture it visually. So the story there is really the like people. And so you really got to find that human story at the center of the environmental issue. And I thought that just this one was, you know, a very exciting one that's going to hook people. So. Well, it sounds like you have four stories in a sense. So you have the, um, the journalist and then you have the environmental uh, gentleman and then the two students. So, so do they all sort of come together in that or or is it more focus on one of the two men okay talk about Matt. yeah okay so, <laughs> so basically um they we met them all through connections from each other really so their stories intersect and they weave together and it and it really i think all of their stories and, uh, and stories of many other people there are part of the same story um we do focus a little bit more on the journalist matt and and then also on paul who is on the island and starting the marine fisheries protected area. Um, and also, and the students we met on Paul's Island. So they're kind of part of that story too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I, I do think that it's, we, it's not really like four intertwining stories as it is one story where we have different uh, characters that come along in the journey and show up at different times and, and then stuff like that. So. How is that for them to, did you, did you speak to all of them beforehand and letting them know, like, look, there may be parts of the film where you won't necessarily like how you're portrayed. I mean, that's always a, a, the, for any documentary that you're doing or, or it doesn't seem like that's come up yet. Cause it, people are, are so, they don't, they only want to be seen the way they see themselves. And sometimes the camera shows a better angle, a worse angle, neutral. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a fine line. And how is that? Well, that's one of the things, um, 
that's really important, like in addition to the initial email and the initial access, um, getting, I guess, uh, creating a good relationship with the people in your film. It, you know, it all comes down to making sure that everyone feels comfortable and that they trust you. It's, it all comes down to trust. So if they know that they can trust you to make sure that their you know, image or that whatever they're doing is gonna be portrayed um, you know, in the way that the documentary should portray it, then that's how you can really make a great film. And I think that you know, that's a risk that they're taking you know, by being part of any film or that any character is taking by being part of a documentary. And that's the only way to really do it. They have to trust the documentary filmmakers because if a character in a film has a lot of oversight or has like, you know, the right to like, you know, screen everything before it gets out there, it really affects how ethical we can be as filmmakers and as storytellers. Definitely. Right. Yeah, and I think every situation is different mm -hmm. too. Uh, and every relationship is, is different with your subjects just like they are with any relationship in your life. And mm -hmm. um, and I, and I think that you, you are faced as a filmmaker with some difficult choices in that regard. Um, I've been, when I go out to Cambodia, so the first time Stephanie and I went together, but the last two times that, that we filmed down there, it was just me because Stephanie's been working on her, uh, on, the, on a Netflix series. Um, but when we, uh, or when, I, when I'm out there, I have shown, you know, I've shared with them like the trailer. We did, we cut like a sizzle trailer. I showed that to them because you know, it's interesting. It's, uh, you know, the risk is they might not like what they see and then sh shut down and, you know, close off access. But, um, but the flip side of that is they might really like what you see and then open access and, and, or at least trust you more. And, um, uh, but I kind of made that choice to, to share what we had at the time, just because I thought that, um, I, you know, I wanted to be transparent and, uh, and keep, them excited because you know filmmaking is a long, particularly documentary filmmaking is a long process. And you know I've been out there a few times, been filming them for a year, and if they don't feel like progress is being made or or they they start to wonder what you're doing, you know that can also kind of erode your relationship. So it's it's always constantly a bit of a balance. And um, I don't like to hide things, but I also don't necessarily like Stephanie said. I don't necessarily think it's also helpful to um, show people early versions of things because it's a half formed idea, not a fully formed thought or whatever. And so it doesn't even really represent necessarily what you, the end thing is going to be. And uh, I learned that on Tiny actually, when we screened some work in progress screenings at film festivals, we did it twice. And I, I regret doing that um, only because, you know, you know, people see the first thing and then in their mind, it's, that's what the film is always. And you never really get a second chance for a first impression. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I guess that's just to say it's, all, it's complicated and I think it's case by case.